Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Sanbona Nibangani. That's hello friends in Zulu. And thanks for joining us again at Biblical Foundations for Africa, coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe, and to understand the Bible for themselves. And then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma and it's my absolute privilege to be your traveling companion as we journey through the Bible. So what's on our agenda for today? Well today we're going to start a two-part series where we're going to look at the names of God. You know one of the things that I really appreciate about African culture is that we always have a clear meaning for our names In Africa, when we name our children, we ensure that we give them names that reflect the situation into which they were born, our hopes and aspirations about what they'll become, or a sense of what the future holds. One of my brothers is called Nkululego, which means freedom. He was born at a time when our nation was on the verge of a major change, and so his name was an echo of the hope that the family was feeling for breakthrough in the nation. In the Bible, God progressively reveals his nature, his character, his personality through his names. We can learn so much about God and who he is and what he does through his names. So in this two-part study, we're going to be made aware of God's character as revealed through his names. So God's names are basically divided into two groups. Firstly, there are his creatorship names, which are called his Elohistic names. That's Elohistic. And then there are his redemptive names, which are called his Jehovahistic names. Today, we're going to look at his Elohistic names. So the Elohistic names of God are those names which have to do with his relationship with his creation. The name El, which is spelt E-L, means strong powerful or mighty. Often you'll find the name El put together with or associated with another word in order to show or display the power of God or other attributes of God in relation to his creation. So today I want to quickly share with you 10 of God's Elohistic names and what they reveal about who he is in relation to us, his creation. Firstly, God is El Elyon, which means God Most High. In Genesis chapter 14 verse 18, Abraham met a king of Salem called Melchizedek. The Bible further tells us that this Melchizedek, who met and blessed Abraham, was a priest of El Elyon, God Most High. This name signifies that God is higher than all others that imagine themselves to be kings and gods. He is El Elyon. Secondly, God is El Roi which means he is the God that sees. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 13 to 14, Sarah's Egyptian maid Hagar had run away from her mistress because she was being so ill-treated. She ran into the desert, but the angel of God found her in the desert and encouraged her to return to her mistress. She also gave her a promise that he would multiply her descendants so that they were numerous. She was so encouraged, and it says she gave God this name. She said, you are El Roi, the God who sees me. This name shows that God sees and knows everything concerning us. Thirdly, God is El Shaddai, which means God, the all-sufficient one. When God met Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, he announced himself as El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, the God who is sufficient for every need, the God who is enough to nourish and take care of his people. He is El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. Fourthly, God is El Olam, which means the everlasting God or the ancient or eternal God. In Genesis chapter 21, when Abraham arrived at Beersheba, he planted a tree and he called on the name of El Olam, the everlasting God. He was acknowledging 
God is the one who is not restricted or constricted by time like we are. He is the God who sits outside of time. El Olam, the everlasting God. Fifth, God is El Gibor, which means the mighty one or the great God. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, we are given the picture of a God who is a warrior and a conquering champion. Gibor actually means strong or mighty. So God is El Gibor, the mighty conquering champion warrior God. Jeremiah 32 verse 18 to 19 says to God, says to the God whose name is the Lord Almighty, great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. Sixth, God is El Emet, which means the God of truth. This implies that he's faithful, He is firm, he's reliable. In Psalm 31 verse 5, the psalmist cries out, Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. God is El Emet, the God of faithfulness and truth. Seventh, God is Elohim Sabaoth, which means God of hosts. The hosts are the mighty angel armies of heaven, even the universe and the stars. He is the God who rules over all the mighty armies that reside both in the heavens and on the earth. He is Elohim Sabaoth. Eighth, here is a really beautiful one. God is El Hayai, which means God of my life. In Psalm chapter 42 verse 8, the psalmist sings, By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is within me. A prayer to the God of my life. God is the God who sustains and nourishes our physical, emotional, and spiritual lives. He is El Hayai, the God of our lives. Ninth, God is called Adonai, which means master, owner, and ruler of all. In Psalm 147 verse 5, it says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. He is Adonai, master, ruler, and owner owner of everything. Tenth and lastly, God is also called Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is the name that was given to Joseph by the angel to give to Jesus when he was born in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. The angel said to him, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus God the Son is Emmanuel, God with us, the Word made flesh who dwelt among us. You know, these are only a selected few of the Elohistic names of God. They are, not, they are by no means the only ones. There are so many of them. You can make it your own personal quest to find out all the Elohistic names of God that are in the Bible. Our God, the God of the Bible, is strong, mighty, and powerful. His character, his nature, and his attributes are all sufficient for every situation we could ever face in our lives. So as you go out today, ask yourself this question. What situation am I facing today? What name can I give God in my situation today? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your written word in the form of the Bible. Lord, thank you for revealing to us that you are the God who is mighty, strong, and powerful in relation to us, your creation. Thank you that in every situation that I face, I can call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Join us again right here at Biblical Foundations for Africa for more discoveries in the Word of God. Check out our website for more resources that can help you with any questions that you might have. Go on and chat to us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time.